So understandably, this might be confusing to some of you, maybe most of you, and rightly so. This is actually quite a difficult part of the course. So let's see if we can simplify things by drawing this graphically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot y versus y okay so by y what i'm doing is i'm putting income here and i'm putting output here now if you remember the discussion from our previous lecture on gdp where we use the income approach to calculate gdp you will remember that income and output will always be the same. So this curve will look like this, where all these points are the same. So if this is 10, this is 10, if this is 80, this is 80 and so on. So this is basically a 45 degree. Okay, so let me just get rid of all these impurities. Oops. Okay, so we have this. Along with this, what I also want to do is I want to draw the demand curve as a function of income. Now, what do we know about demand? Demand curve was C plus I plus G. And when we simplified this, what we had was C naught plus uh, C1 y minus t plus i plus g okay now so we have z here we have y here z in terms of y if we plot this what we are going to get notice that there is an autonomous spending part so this equation is not going to start from the origin it's going to start from somewhere up here, even when income is zero. There will be some demand because there is autonomous consumption, there is autonomous spending. So we're going to start from here. And this is what the demand function is going to look like. Let's call this Z. Okay. Now, what does that mean at this point? the demand curve is intersecting the 45 degree line. That means this at this point, demand is equal to how much income we have, which means this E here is the equilibrium. Okay, so from here, let's go back to the equation. What we had seen, notice here, is that consumption had gone up by a thousand. Okay, so in this case, if consumption went up by a thousand, what would happen to the demand curve? it would shift up by a thousand. So what we would see is something like this, Z prime. This rise, this is worth a thousand. Curve has shifted up. And this is now the new equilibrium. Let me go back to the red ink. E prime, the new equilibrium. So let's see what's happened here. Okay, so notice what 
has happened. Consumption had gone up by a thousand. This is the rise, this, this, that is the rise. But because of this rise in consumption of a thousand, by how much has our output gone up by this much? So, and it should be obvious that this distance is smaller than this distance. So this is basically the graphical representation of what we were talking about, is that if any one of these things, if consumption or investment, uh, government spending or taxation, if any part of our autonomous spending where to change the actual change on the economy would be much larger in this example consumption had gone up by a thousand investment could have gone up by a thousand or the government could have started to spend more by a thousand but because of that first thing that happened is that the demand curve shifted up which meant that the autonomous spending part became larger. But what also happened is that output in the economy increased and it did not increase by a thousand, it increased by 4,000. 